Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Today we are going to talk about marketing. This man I'm bringing to the stage I'm extremely excited about because he is the man, the myth, the legend himself. He is taking marketing to a whole new level and he's doing some incredible things and he's here to teach us how to take our business to the next level with some modern day strategies, but also some traditional strategies that we have maybe have forgotten about. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss one second of this man known as the smartest man in the world. Here we go. Hey everyone, I'm your host Marcus of the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and today I have Saul Colt. He is the founder and creative director at the Idea Integration Company. In his career, he has been named as one of the iMedia 25's internet marketing leaders and innovators, as well as been called one of Canada's best community builders, uh, marketers around the, the, the world. Also, he's a New York Times best-selling author and internet pioneer with Mr. Chris Bogan once referred to him as exactly who you want representing your brand, your company. And today he's here to share some of that wisdom, that knowledge, that expertise here on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. So without further ado, help me welcome Mr. Saul Colt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marcus, thank you so much for having me on the show. That um, that introduction was so wonderful. I feel like we should get a big house together and eat <laughs> breakfast every morning. It'll get my day going perfectly. Absolutely. Follow you around with like some theme music, get your own personal theme music. <laughs> Something, just, yeah. Boost, boosting you up all day long. Sir, <laughs> you did the incredible work, and I thank you for your work, and thank you for being here with us on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Well, thank Sir, you for you, having me. Of course. You have an incredible mind and 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 your ideas and beliefs and, and theories around marketing have, have really led. Um, you have been listed on numerous, numerous companies and helped many companies take their brand to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, sir, what is your secret? Because you could literally do anything you set your mind to. What is why the focus on content and advertising and marketing, sir? Well, so well, first I, I'll say I can't do anything I set my mind to because I haven't won the lottery yet, and and there's there's still women out there that don't um you know find me attractive. But um when when it comes to professionally speaking, um I, I you know I I think that the 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 greatest asset that I have is that um you know I, I've got sort of like foolish um belief or or uh, you know blind belief in myself that I can come up with anything and I'm better than anyone else and I don't mean that in a disparaging way I just have absolute confidence in my own abilities and and you know and 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 you know another little secret that I don't talk about that much is I'm I'm you know I, I'm sort of self-taught so when you're self-taught you don't have all the rules you know, burned into you that you can't do this and you can't do that. And you have to do things a certain way. Uh, so, you know, because no one ever told me that I couldn't do a certain things a certain way, I just do them the way they make the most sense. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd say I've got about a, a 900 batting average about, uh, you know, guessing right and, and pulling off, um, you know, really great things and, and doing cool projects. So, um, you know, I, yeah, like I just think believing in yourself is such a huge thing. So true. So true. Believing in yourself, believing in your brand, believing in the company, your company, whatever it is, your your product, your what, whatever it is, believe in yourself. Got to start there because no one's going to believe in it more than you. True, mm. true words, Mr. Colt. True, true words. Why has advertising in, in your professional opinion why is advertising gotten boring what what are we doing wrong 
Um, so, you know, I think it's gotten boring. Well, I, I won't say it's gotten boring. It's gotten too safe. Um, people are afraid to offend anybody. People are afraid to, um, you know, take a stand on anything. You know, you, you, you know, the, you know, we're, we're, we're far. And, and when I say people, it's really about people, you know, like when you think of a brand like a Ben and Jerry's or a Nike, you know, they take stands as a brand and they, they push the limits and they do really cool things. But the thing that sometimes people forget is that that VP of marketing or that chief marketing officer is a person and they let their beliefs, whatever they might be, um, sometimes creep into the work or, or their fear of getting fired or their um, whatever. So, you know, it's, you know, and, and with all the political political correctness and cancel culture that's going on right now. A lot of people are really afraid to, to do interesting things. And it's a shame because the bar has gone so low on interesting that if you do the littlest, make the littlest effort with your, your, um, your followers and your customers and your consumers, they will notice. And brands should, this is the time brands should be taking huge chances. We've all been stuck in our house for, you know, two years. The, the world is starting to open up a little bit again, and people are, are itching to participate. They're itching to be wowed. They're itching to be entertained and they want to be entertained by their brands because they love like as a society, we've been taught to love brands and love products and love things, whether that's right or wrong. It just happens to be the reality. And, you know, like I, I love so many things that, that companies do, but also I'm bored by so many things that companies do. V, uh, Volkswagen released an ad the other day that they're getting, you know, high fives and, and everyone's saying it's the most clever thing ever. It's uh, it's just a guy who's walking around a city looking at his iPhone and like bumping into people and knocking over things. And, and he walks into the middle of the road and the, the, the Volkswagen SUV puts on an automatic braking system so that it doesn't hit the guy. And people are like, this ad is edgy. The guy, you know, bumped into a kid and I looked at it and I just thought this ad is boring. Um, it's not interesting or not edgy. Um, but that, like when I said, the bar is so low right now, um, you know, anything is, is perceived as, as edgy, but man, if brands took chances and some are, and the people who work with us certainly do, um, they, they're getting rewarded because this is what people want. Makes sense. Makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. Tell us your company, your company, um, idea integration. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what is it that you specialize in and what is it specifically that you help companies and brands do? So we're, we're, at, um, we're a marketing and advertising agency. Uh, we, we work a lot with humor and satire. Um, but if your brand doesn't want humor or satire, the, the main thing we do is really about pushing the limits, um, you know, standing out being interesting, you know, finding that nugget that people are really going to respond to and, and what's going to resonate. Our, our creative team is made up from the former um, creative team from Mad Magazine, uh, as well as writers from The Simpsons. We have a lot of, um, you know, uh, people who work in TV and, and movies on our staff because we like to think of our, our work as art. We like to think of it as theatrical. It's, it's, you know, we're, we're all kind of frustrated artists that um, have, have really been drawn to marketing and working with brands as our canvas um, because that's what gets attention and that's what gets seen. And, and that's where budgets and, and money is and things like that. So, um, but we've worked with, you know, worked with Nike, we've worked with eBay, we work with HP, um, Twitter, all sorts of different companies. But we've also worked with tiny, companies that um you know people have never heard of we we delivered this month alone four brand new brands for um products that are gonna you know hit the market in the next uh, quarter and and so we work with everybody the the main thing we 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 do when we're deciding who we work with is really are you a brand that is is fits our personality are you a brand that wants to take chances wants to be great instead of just boring and ordinary yeah, I love that. 
I love that. That's huge. And and you're right. We are we're, we're afraid, right? I, I'll speak for myself. We're afraid to kind of push the edge. <laughs> Mad TV growing up as a kid definitely pushed the envelope. Definitely. And the Simpsons, oh man, a lot of stuff that the Simpsons joked about back mm-hmm. in the day is actually coming true and and but it was like you said, it was on the edge, but it was it was still even today it's still cutting edge it still grabs your attention when the simpsons come on you know um to tune in you know you're gonna laugh you know you're gonna get some humor you know you're gonna get all the 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 satire what what is it that we're missing on a, on a on a what is the common denominator that we're missing um just i know you said pushing the edge but is mm-hmm. it um is it because we're afraid to get sued i mean you say the wrong thing next thing you know will smith is coming on and slapping you right mm-hmm. I mean, what what is what is right there? Um, what's just enough? How do you know? How can you tell? And so you know, that, and and you know, that's an amazing point. Um, you know, I, I, I've used this example a few times, but in January, Pabst Blue Ribbon, the the beer company, they put out a tweet that said, um, you know, uh, not drinking in January, try eating ass, and it was just such a bizarre statement for a brand to make and they probably made it because their social media manager was probably a kid um who just thought it was really funny and they didn't think about it or think um sort of long term um one of the things that we do is is we you know if 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 talking about eating ass was appropriate for a brand we would suggest it but we don't go there first because we actually do a ton of research to find out where that line is what you can get away with, and it's not what you can get away with with the, the 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 company or the president of the company. It's what your customers will let you get away with. A lot of times, we've lost projects because we've shown something that made the decision maker really uncomfortable, but that was their insecurity or their um, you know prejudice that wouldn't let the project go through. But we did all the research and showed that we we spoke to a hundred of your customers, and this is what they think is funny, and this is what they'll let you get away with. And what we try to do is once we know where that line is of what you can get away with, we try to cross that line by two baby steps because th- those two baby steps are where the shock is going to come thing. But you don't want to cross that line by like ten steps because that's when you're going to get slapped, and that's when you're going to lose customers, and that's when you know people are gonna you know start picketing and and things like that but it but i do believe once you know where that line is you still got to cross it a tiny tiny bit true very true love it saw coat y'all told y'all you see the knowledge you see the wisdom right here oh my gosh you can't get this anywhere else except on the gentleman style podcast show or connecting with mr saw colt and his team they're going to help you take your brand to the next level. We have one quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. We'll be right, right back. We got to pay some bills. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level and the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, 
and interviews as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. We are back. If you were just tuning into the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, we have the incredible CEO founder, Mr. Saul Cole. And he is speaking to us. He's the CEO and creative director of his company, Idea Integration. And he is speaking to us and sharing with us some of the reasons behind what, what we're missing in our brand, what we're missing in our business to, to really grab the attention of your ideal customer. Uh, Mr. Call, you you spoke to this on a previous podcast episode, and I need your help. Can you can you explain to my audience what's the difference between what does influence without context mean? What does that mean for my audience? Yeah, so influence, I think, is something that a lot of people are are getting wrong. And you know, there there certainly is a place for influencers, and there is a place for working with influencers or working, you know showing influence but you know people think that a, a high number of uh, social media followers makes you an influencer but you can only really be an influencer if people believe what you're talking about and if you are sort of like a subject matter expert so i i have you know a fair number of followers online but i know nothing about construction or building anything i'm not a very handy person so i could never be an influencer in the community of you know woodworkers or carpentry or anything like that i am um, i know a lot about you know cars and sports and and pop culture and marketing and you know uh, you wouldn't know it by looking at me today but fashion and and things like that so i could be you know influential in those um areas because i do have a subject matter expertise but i've never been to you know, Italy. So I can't say I'm an, uh, I'm a travel influencer that could give you real, um, you know, valuable information about traveling to Italy. So the, the thing that people don't get is that you need that context. So I'm influential with, you know, um, really, really attractive women aged 35 to 45. Um, they believe me and they, they listen to what I say, but I wouldn't be influential with lawyers or doctors because I have no area of expertise. And a lot of people think that you can be influential, just globally influential. And that's not correct. You know, you, you have, you can be influential in the things that you're good at. And, you know, the other thing is that people also think, high numbers of social media followers equals influence when in reality it's really more about engagement so somebody with 600 followers but every one of those 600 people follow every word from that person and buy the products they suggest and support them would actually be more influential than somebody with 72,000 followers, but nobody comments, nobody likes, nobody shares, nobody buys, and, and nobody responds or engages in any way. So, um, you know, influence is a funny thing that a lot of people get wrong, um, but, you know, you just have to kind of look at it very differently. Love that. That's very true. And and you're right. It's uh, What I'm hearing is, is stay in your lane. Right. Stay in your mm -hmm. lane of influence. Right. And it's it's twofold. I see a lot of people that partner with brands, you know, that that don't suit their brand. Right. Just because mm -hmm. they want a paycheck and it's not. And that's not a really good fit. Um, I met another expert. Well, it's a like, good fit for the influencer. It's not a good fit for the brand. <laughs> true. Very true. It's not a good fit for the brand. And you really have to take that into account. When, when when you reach out to, to potential clients or when they're reaching out to you to say, are we a good fit? Does this really serve my target audience? And I think you're right. We, we, we really want to kind of 
touch everybody. I'm a world influence. Do you believe that there are such people in the world? Like the the president of the United States, he's a influential people person worldwide, right? Or no? Is he? Ha- does he even have his own demographic or his his uh his own culture that he speaks to that really resonate with him? Yeah, even even someone like the president, you know, because there's there's half of the the nation doesn't support the person or like the person, you know. So it's it's really about and and you know in other countries and things like that. The closest to a global influencer would probably be you know like an athlete or a musician or somebody who isn't really pushing an agenda, you know, like they're not saying, um, you know buy this or buy that, except they're, they'd probably say buy my record or stream my record or something like that. But, um, you know, like, like someone like Michael Jordan, um, is, you know, pretty beloved worldwide or at least recognizable worldwide. He doesn't do any social media or anything like that, but, you know, you know, somebody who is, who is, um, not pushing the agenda could actually be an accidental global influencer, but, you know, anyone who's telling you to go buy a certain face cream or go buy a certain car, um, you know, it's just not going to work globally. True. Makes sense. You've mm-hmm. seen the the truth commercials for cigarettes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, th- those, to me, are pretty on the edge. Um, just mm-hmm. in a quick dissection, how do you how would you rate those commercials? Would you say those are on the edge type of, of brands or, or commercials? Or not pushing the edge enough to, to really bring home the seriousness of cigarette smoking and and, and mm. the, the benefits and the pro well, not the benefits the cons of what could happen if you smoke is that too edgy or not enough? I'm, so I actually think those are really good commercials and they're they're very strong and and they're along the right line. But this goes back to the conversation of context. You know that sort of product and that sort of message earns a very forceful. Um, message or messaging or edge, however you want to describe it. Um, You know, when you think of different products, like, you know, like um, when you think of car companies, you know, and and I'm making a generalization, but I'd say 60% of all car commercials are just um, a car with beautiful people driving through the mountains or curvy roads or whatever. You know, it, you know, it's it's net or it's showing somebody going grocery shopping to show how much stuff you can put in the car. There's so much more interesting stuff you can do, you know, for a product like that. When when you see consumer electronic products like an iPad or or, or an iPhone or something, it's usually just people dancing or you know, like something like that. Like there's just there's too many easy buckets that people have fallen into that it's just like okay, you know, like we're not we're not pushing the limit it's here you know like for for an iphone commercial you know and i'm I'm, this is like a 30 second idea it's not a great idea but you know how great would it be to see somebody like you know (laughs) kidnapped or in a home invasion (laughs) and uh and they're using their phone to call 911 you know it's like the the you know like show the real value of these products and 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 stuff like that you know your your commercial for um um uh what's the the razor product manscaped manscaped Speaking um, about eating ass right yeah um <laughs> great product they're everywhere and the, their commercials fine because they're going after you know it, it's about knowing your target audience like they're not going after perverts they're not going after everything they do is is sort of um insinuated but not shown so i actually think their stuff is pretty smart and and pretty strong because it's an easy product that you could go too far on and and actually a lot of people would be offended but they're making you know sort of like a a sexy salacious product mainstream and i think they're doing a really interesting uh job with it so like and and they're everywhere so they're you know i i give them kind of kudos for the the approach they're taking edgy Take away the word edgy and, and trade it for really smart and, and creative because not everything has to shock, but everything should make you think, you know, and everything should like really, because if you're thinking even for 10 seconds longer about a commercial, that's 10 seconds. You're not thinking about that product's competitor, or that's 10 seconds more that the, the brand is getting embedded in your brain. You know, I, I was reading an article earlier today that, 
the word brand, um, when we're, we talk about branding, comes from the branding of like animals, you know, like the, the hot poker and, and, and going in because it's about creating a mark on somebody and, and having them sort of never forget you. So I think a lot of people forget that part of brand. It's become this ephemeral word that's a catch-all for a lot of things. But but branding is is really what it sounds like. It's about you know putting a permanent you know reminder into somebody about where they should think about what they, where they should spend their money, where they should spend their time. And you know a lot of companies get that so wrong because they they don't think of it as as this permanent thing and you know like the you know lots of small transactional sort of campaigns but branding is really about you know every decision a company makes has to go towards the brand every decision um you know people make as a business should run through the filter is this you know okay with our brand is this what we're trying to 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 do to say to tell you know like i i mentioned nike before you know Nike does so many interesting things. They stand by athletes who sometimes get on the wrong side of the law. They stand by, you know, the, the people they support, you know, they, they stood by Colin Kaepernick and all these things because Nike is not a Nike. They, they consider themselves a family. Part of their brand is about family and family is kind of permanent, whether you like it or not. And they do such a great job about creating that, that brand on you where it becomes like people literally get Nike tattoos all the time. And, you know, that's kind of like the highest honor someone could pay any company is putting it on their, their body permanently. And I don't think you see, you don't see too many people with, you know, tattoos for, for, you know, brands that aren't interesting and transactional uh, brands. True. Very true. I -hmm. told y'all the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Mm-hmm. Mr. Cole, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. You got a question from our audience member here, Miss Roxanne Benz. Great question, Ms. Mm-hmm. Benz. She asks, Mr. Cole, what would you suggest a person do if they want to branch off? For example, I've made a stamp on my island, which is the U.S. Virgin Islands. However, I would like to branch out. I've been doing well in the Florida area because I live there. And now, Georgia. How do I branch out to more places? What do... What would be your suggestion? And she follows up with, I run a small business called Pretty Committee that caters to children, both boys and girls. Uh, so so I'm going to give you a very simple answer to this, Roxanne. But I also suggest, like, drop me an email. I'm happy to hop on a call and, and you know, sort of uh, talk it through. Obviously, without knowing all the information, I, I'm going to give you a very general answer. But um you know, the, the fact that you're doing a, a good job in the U.S. Virgin Islands and then Florida and Georgia, um, you know, where you live, you know, that's that's kind of how you should do it. You know, if you think of the game Risk, if you're familiar with the game Risk, you can't take over the country, um, you know, all at the same time. You need sort of your your soldiers. I know with everything going on with shootings and stuff, maybe I should come up with a different analogy. But, you know, when you your soldiers can only protect like, you know, you kind of want to keep them close. So you started in Florida, you're doing okay in Florida. You made a jump to Georgia, which geographically is very close. So once you've built up Florida and Georgia, I think the next territory would be probably the Carolinas. And then you keep sort of moving really, really close. And it is about kind of domination and taking over the world and all that stuff but you want to do it in in really really small jumps so you're close enough to handle if there's any problems you can still you're close enough to get in a car or get on a very short flight and and go um, fix any problems pitch your product do more sales all that sort of stuff if you were to auto- automatically say i'm doing well in florida and then i'm going to go to texas and i'm going to go to california um you know, some people have made that work, but it, there's a lot of business just going right up from Florida to New York. And then north to south is always cheaper for shipping and 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 travel than east to west. And then you can start moving into the Midwest and, and take over California at the very end. But, you know, what you should do is um, 
figure out why Florida worked so well and use all those learnings, all those audiences, figure out what type of people were buying your product and then target those people in Georgia with your paid advertising and stuff like that. And then, you know, now you've got two states that you're doing pretty well. You should get a bunch of testimonials and, and build your, your ideal um, customer. And then if you do decide to go into the Carolinas, you've got testimonials you sort of know who your target market is you know you know their their demographics their household incomes you know where they shop what they like what they don't like and and with every state and with every almost with every month you're in business you know more about your your customer and you can target them in these new areas because the new areas are really really hard to build up but as you build up new areas you never want to forget who got you there so make sure you you never slow down on florida you never slow down on georgia but use all that information to make smart decisions to grow and and sort of just keep moving through the entire united states and once you've taken over the us go to canada then go to england and all the other english speaking countries and uh, before you know it you're going to be living in steve harvey's mansion <laughs> Phenomenal. There you go, Miss Benz. I hope that helps. I hope that answers your question. Um, I was taking notes backstage, y'all, so don't mind me. This is this is the beauty of having your own podcast. You get to you get to take notes and get to learn and grow. She says thank you. So huge, huge help. That was that was phenomenal. Another round of applause for Mr. Colt, y'all. Mr. Colt, what was the strategy behind adding um, the Mad Magazine team to your to your team? What was the thought process behind that? What was the the, the goal with that move? Because Mad Magazine was very very powerful. They, I mean, they still are. They're still a well known. The, the the Mikey with the buck teeth, that face, mm -hmm. that's still memorable. Yeah. So the the um, uh, you know during the 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 first year of the pandemic, our our company really suffered. Um, you know, a lot of our clients uh, you know decided to uh, scale back and and not take any risks and and not do the sort of things we do. So there was um you know there there was many months where we were just sort of sitting around wondering what was going to happen. You know, I'm happy to say that we're doing really well now and we're back on track. But that that first year was was really really tough and. You know, sort of one great thing that happened from that was we had time to really think about where we want to take the company and what we want to do and how we want to grow it. And, you know, throwing in the towel was never a, 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 um, an option. It was always about saving this and, and growing it back up and making it huge. So, um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I've known Bill Morrison, who was the editor in chief of Mad Magazine for, you know, a decade or more. And um, we, we were always, um, you know, sort of talking and, and uh, staying in touch. And uh, Mad Magazine actually folded two years ago. Uh, so a lot of the Mad team were freelancing. And I've always wanted to, uh, to work with Bill. And Bill also worked on The Simpsons for 20 years. Um, so uh, we were talking, you know, sort of brainstorming. Is, is there a way we could work together? And, and um, you know, just sort of, you know, we kept talking for three, four months until we worked out all the details. And Bill basically brought himself and the, his whole team uh, under our, our company umbrella. And it, it really, you know, we've been going pretty strong now for about nine months uh, with this creative team and um it's been it's been incredible it's changed the business it's allowed us to offer more services we can offer now full animation you know we've got 20 illustrators copywriters some of the pr most professionally funny people in the world so um you know we've always had a great business um but you know now i'd, I'd say we've got you know just something that is is um better than great and and something that very few people uh can compete with absolutely absolutely what advice you've you've shared so many nuggets today on the show mr colt sir mm -hmm. what what advice would you give to that young boy that young girl that young business owner that young entrepreneur out in the audience who you you said it earlier covid was a tumultuous year it was a terrible year for business mm -hmm. how would you what tips or, or last strategy would you give to that entrepreneur who's trying to turn their marketing or advertising around any other strategies sir 
Um, there's a lot, you know. Um, one I would say is is you know be honest with people, talk to people. There's a lot of people I, I talk to who say that you know COVID was great for them. When I know the truth, it wasn't. Um, you know, like just be honest with people, and people will help, and people will offer you support. Um, you know, if if you're slow, um, and I don't mean slow like like. <laughs> Mentally. Yeah. Mentally. I mean, if work is slow, you know, use that time to better yourself. Take a course, read books. You know, I'm, I, 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 I love to read, but, you know, I, I, when I'm busy, I try to, you know, listen to some audio books and things like that, but I'm always trying to learn more. And, and um, you know, I, I find I learn so much from inspiring conversations. So it's really important to not shut yourself, you know, out from, from people and society. And, and go to networking events and talk to people, you know, wear your mask, don't wear your mask, whatever you believe in, but go out there and, and be around some people and ideas will come. But, you know, it, the, the idea that, that everything's going to be all right is not something I believe in. I think you have to work really hard and you sort of have to make your own luck. And, and that just comes from, you know, hard work and hustle and, you know, don't, don't hustle so much that, that you're, you're hurting yourself physically or mentally, but, but it's, it's really important to just not give up. And, and believe me, there's tons of days where I wish I could just sleep the day away and watch movies all day. But it, like, it's, you know, once you sort of get in the groove of things, like work is good and, and you got to just keep at it. Absolutely. So what's your favorite, <laughs> what's the favorite stunt you've pulled in marketing? What's your most memorable talked about um, stunt you've pulled in marketing? Um, my, my, f the most talked about is the, the fact that we did, uh, sky writing to promote a, uh, cloud-based company. Um, but my favorite stunt was, um, we did a fashion show for a belt company where all the models were naked except for the belt. Um, we had male and female full frontal nudity, um, because, you know, how could you do a fashion show for belts? And if you can't see the belt, so we, uh, that's probably my favorite stunt we ever did. Um, <laughs> that's a win. That's a win. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is genius, sir. Pure <laughs> genius. That's why I told you all, the smartest man in the world. <laughs> Mr. Colt, how can my audience connect with you? How can we learn more? How can we grow with you? Um, check out my website, uh, theideaintegration.com. Um, you know, you can find me pretty much anywhere on the internet at uh, just search my name, Saul Colt. Uh, you know, all one word is, you know, pretty much everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn, reach out. I, I answer all my own emails, all my own messages. And, and um, you know, if you'd like to just hop on a call, just email me. Um, we do free 15 minute consulting calls to pretty much anyone who's interested. Love it. Love it. There you go. Connect, connect, connect. If your business is on the fence with its marketing and it needs some fresh perspective, it needs a, it needs an awakening. It needs some revitalization. Check out Mr. Salt Colt and his team and his company. They are doing phenomenal things, even with belts. You're going to take your brand to the next level. Mr. Colt, sir, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to be here and share with my audience. This is truly phenomenal. You are epic, sir. I appreciate you. I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever quit. Don't ever give up. We need you. We need what you're doing, sir. Thank you. Now, I appreciate you having me on the show. This was a real honor. Absolutely. It's an honor to have you. Great, great. Yes, Nikki Brown, thank you. Um, one of our VIP sponsors of the show, we thank you. Thank you for being here. And Miss Benz, she thanks you. I'll be connecting with you, Mr. Colt. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you, my audience, for tuning in. I'm glad and I hope this was informational and helpful. And I hope this helps you take your business, your marketing to the next level. We got to let Mr. Colt go. But like always, I always end every show. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show signing off. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>